the president in a helicopter, mountainous terrain, bad weather. What could possibly go wrong? Chance and accident have a vote in history. A microsecond's error is enough. But what now for Iran? Has the power struggle already started? Join me, Jan Darash, for How We Got Here. Iranian authorities have confirmed that President Ebrahim Raisi and Foreign Minister Hossein Amir Abdullahian died in a helicopter crash on the weekend. With the loss of Khamenei's potential successors, Tehran's inner circle is keen to fill the void, posing a substantial challenge for the country's supreme leader. While the deaths of two senior Iranian officials at the same time as many conflicts rage in the region comes as a shock, they are unlikely to significantly affect their cause. Decisions on foreign policy and war continue to be the sole prerogative of the supreme leader Ali Khamenei. The president of the Islamic Republic is an implementer, not a decision maker. Consequently, the basic policies of the Islamic Republic will remain the same. At the same time, however, the sudden loss of Iran's president creates a power vacuum that Tehran's senior figures will want to exploit. Raisi was seen as the main candidate to succeed Khamenei. One of his biggest advantages was his multi-dimensional experience. He was a clergyman, a former chief justice, as well as president. The loss of Amir Abdullahian is also significant, as according to many, he was an extremely effective foreign minister, overseeing a successful reconciliation with Saudi Arabia and coping with a series of difficult crises, including with Iran's powerful neighbor, Pakistan. While Iran's overall foreign policy will remain unchanged, the need to deal with unexpected political upheavals will likely divert its attention from a multifaceted struggle with Israel. There is also a risk that following a series of failures, the regime will look weak. According to analysts, the loss of two senior officials in a helicopter crash makes the regime look defenseless and incompetent. However, if Khamenei succeeds in securing a smooth transition, the Islamic Republic will display some stability in difficult times. The question remains how Western officials will react to the death of a leader whose country is responsible for most of the terrorism and instability in the Middle East and beyond, not to mention its crucial military support for Russia's war with Ukraine. Our guest today is Łukasz Przybyszewski. He's the founder of the Abhazid Foundation Fund. Welcome once more to the programme. Great to have you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Um, before we enter into the intricacies uh, of the uh, current Iranian political scene, um, presumably we can dismiss the uh, helicopter crash as an accident, although there probably will be conspiracy theories uh, rife uh, as we speak. Yes, I mean the conspiracy theories well culprited, published uh, just right away. Yeah. The news came out that the uh, that the that the chopper actually had a, either a hard landing or that it crashed. Yeah. So now we see that those conspira conspiracy theories are being spread mainly from uh, Iran's adversaries in the region. Because for them, it's positive to be seen as someone who can pull the strings and just kill the head of state, just like that, yeah? So it's, like, it's more like a terrorizing information campaign now, disinformation campaign. Are these, are these Israeli, Iraqi, Pakistani? <sighs> Iran has so many adversaries in the region that it's really hard to tell who is actually paying for it, yeah? Because yeah. that's the main question. We could have, for example, a, a team, a disinformation team built in Vietnam, yeah, but they're paid by someone else. So it's really, I mean, attribution here, it's, it's, it's a hard thing, but we can assume that is, of course, most likely Israel, perhaps to some degree uh, Turkey, perhaps to some degree Saudi Arabia. Uh, that's, that's debatable, yeah. Uh, of course, there is always a non-zero chance that it wasn't an accident, yeah? That perhaps it was actually, uh, someone sabotaged the, the, uh, the, the, the helicopter. But here I think that it's, the probability would be less than 5%, Yes, in my opinion. I could be wrong because the investigation is still ongoing, so they will have to check 
uh, the black box too. Uh, but yeah, in my opinion, that's rather unlikely that it would be uh, that that he would be assassinated this way. Um, could you give us a, an outline of what of, of the machinations inside the uh, Iranian political scene? Um, we're, we're used to seeing Iran as this monolithic, theocratic state, very hardline. But you suggested uh, earlier as, as we talked that it's a very complex uh, web of competing power centres. Could you just outline that for us? Yes, so basically when we in the West look at Iran, we just see the supreme leader, so the Ayatollah, uh, Khamenei, and the president who is being elected every few years. And we are also told that it's the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps that pulls the strings, yeah? And sometimes we do hear that there are some oligarchs, that there are some lobbyists who very often are later on uh, arrested and trialed in, in Iran for corruption, uh, etc. But basically, uh, the supreme leader has the final word in pretty much everything, but he has to weigh in all the options that he's presented with. Yeah? So these, are, these options are delivered by his office, by the presidential office, by the IRGC, by Artesh, yeah? so the army, and by the intelligence. So he has a very wide uh, view on what's going on. And his duty is to pick the most consensual and most beneficial for the state option. Yeah, that's the thing. So we very often have this impression that he was the one who, as like a dictator, just said this has to be done. Yes, and everybody. But that's follows. not very often. That's not the case. It's a smokescreen because we don't see what options he had on the table and who presented it to them to, to him. Yeah. And also the, the, the clerics are very often competing among, among each, uh, each other. Uh, of course, everyone is very much you know, keen to see who will be named the next supreme leader, the successor. Some said that it could be Raisi, the deceased president, but uh, we can never be sure who was the most favorite, uh, favorable candidate. Because for example, Khamenei also wasn't the most favorite one. It was Motahari who was killed in 79. So we see that it doesn't often needs to be the case that it's Raisi, maybe it's someone else who will be the next supreme leader. But we also have oligarchs in Iran. We also have uh, parastatal foundations, uh, the so-called Bonyots, which are like the toppings of huge conglomerates. So the web is pretty large, it's very complicated, and also we have uh, the emigres in, in the West who are very often acting as mediators between the state and the intelligence apparatus and us in the West. Has this system evolved since 1979 or has it... Yes, the system you know, has How evolved. did it start? The system has evolved because at the beginning we had the, the, the office of the prime minister, it was abolished. And then uh, we, uh, Iran just had the presidential office plus the supreme leader. And um, the system did evolve. And what I wanted to say just a, a moment ago was that uh, aside of just picking the best option for the state as a whole and for the survival of, the, of, of, this, of this system, Khamenei, the supreme leader, also has to clean up the state very often, meaning that he has to cut through the conflicts that are arising among competing power centers, etc. Sometimes, perhaps, it means that someone needs to be assassinated. Who knows? Yeah, but very often he just needs to uh, know what's uh, happening in the state and finding the, the, the best solution or. This, uh, the, the perfect scapegoat, all or the real person who is behind something, yeah? You, you, for, you, you, yeah, sorry, because for example, we had this case of Rafsanjani, uh, the, uh, 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 
uh, who was the president of Iran in the 90s, yeah? Some people said he was murdered because he had a heart attack in, the, in his swimming pool and he drowned, he died. Uh, some sa were saying that, okay, those protests in 2009, they were unavoidable, they had to happen, but perhaps they were also co-orchestrated in such a way that, for example, Musavi could get arrested, Karubi could get arrested. So people who perhaps uh, Khamenei has seen as um, competitors to, to, to the will of others who actually have a better idea on how to run the state later on, yeah? So that's you, basically... You, you, you stress the idea of picking the, the, the top policy, the, 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 the uh, most favorable policy. Um, but what, what, power, what uh, role does personality play in this? Uh, it depends on what... Is, is, there, is, there a, is there a general consensus about Iranian policy and the personalities involved are just yeah. more or less in accord? Mm -hmm. how, do you, how do you see that? More or less, it's pretty much the view on how to uh, how, how Iran should look like, the society, the, pol the foreign policy, defense policy, etc., is more or less the same among all the parliamentary parties. It's actually those formations are not parties. It's more like um, uh, like parliamentary groups because mm -hmm. there are no formal parties in, in Iran, uh, so to say, technically, so to say, yeah. And, uh, for example, Raisi's personality was, you know, he was not a charismatic leader. His speeches were, well, people were le just left cold. It's, it wasn't anything special. Rouhani was better because he was also participating in negotiations. So, uh, so he was more uh, skilled rhetorically, yeah? Ahmadinejad. I mean, everyone now remembers the speeches, the fiery speeches of Ahmadinejad, yeah, also in, at the UN. Uh, Khatami, I think Khatami was also a very calm, analytical, analytical type of, 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 of a man, very similar to Raisi, yeah? Maybe they had different style, they, they had also different uh, life experience, yeah? But basically that's, uh, on a, on a, uh, as for a president, it's not that important what type of character he has. Most important is how loyal he is and what can he deliver, yeah? Rouhani's uh, task was to deliver the fulfillment of the GCPOA, yeah? He failed, not because of his fault, but he failed, yeah? Uh, while Raisi was seen as the person who knows everything about Iran's judiciary and in Iran's judiciary are the most influential and powerful competitors to the to the system. Yeah. There are there have been certain um, knee-jerk reactions on on the West to say that this is a quote good thing. The world's going to be a better place. That's a very naive thing for the West to say, isn't it? It is, because first of all, if anyone thinks that Iran's foreign policy or security uh, policy will change, they're in error. That's yes. as simple as that, because the first vice president that will now take over the, the presidential office and also facilitate the next elections that will be in 50 days, yeah, he is clearly one of the, of, of the security apparatus's confidentials because he was the one who also participated in acquiring uh, missile technology and drone technology from Russia, for example. He also was in the Setat, so it's uh, the Imam's executive order headquarters. So that's like, um, like an investment and slush fund for, for the Supreme Leader, because that, that's an entity that gathered all the, the wealth that was left by the uh, by the uh, Shah elites, mm -hmm. yeah, and then it was redistributed, etc., 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 mostly real estate. Uh, so everyone knows that he's an absolute loyalist, yeah. So no changes within the next 50 days. That's that, that's that's uh, that's uh, absolutely unlikely. Afterwards, I guess 
most likely someone, some candidate would win who would just continue the path that the others had before him. It really, really doesn't matter who it will be because they'll just pick the best option they have. They have many options. For now on, I don't think, I don't think it's Kalibov who was the Tehran police chief. I don't think it's going to be anyone from, from, the, from the Larijani clan. Most likely they'll pick someone who would preserve the authority of the supreme leader and at the same time give an impression that there are some changes yeah. in the system coming. You've given this kind of 50-day uh, deadline. Uh, the, the, is that going to be a, a hard and fast date or do these... Um, is this jostling for power, can, can that go on for, for an indefinite period of time? I mean, jostling for power in Iran goes all the time. <laughs> That's the thing. Mm -hmm. uh, so once the, the new president will be elected, uh, we'll see that the competition in the backstage will still, still be ongoing. That's unavoidable. But it doesn't mean that Iran will turn into chaos. It doesn't mean that in Iran we'll see major demonstrations popping up, etc. Because that's that's just not this case. That's not an event that would trigger those. Yeah. Yes. So it's it's all, it's, it's a kind of a wishful thing, you know, wishful thinking on behalf of the critics of the Iranian regime that this uh, accident, this ch effort by chance uh, that's been presented, is going to ipso facto going to lead to a change and, and you mm -hmm. were quite rightly said it's, we shouldn't expect that. Yeah, I mean perhaps in Israel someone will see this tragic event because it's tragic, yes. objectively speaking, yeah. Uh, as, I don't know, God's hand, who knows, because yeah. now they, they really, who would attack Iran now? Yeah, as, as a retaliation for what Iran did. It just wouldn't make any sense now. Yes. So out of this secretive society, we need to have patience and eventually they, they, they will formulate a, a resolution to the, to the problem themselves, won't they? Most likely, yes. Um, OK, we, unfortunately, we've run out of time, but thank you very much, Lukasz Przybyszewski, for coming onto the programme and uh, trying to shed some light into this uh, area. So thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. And that's it. That's We've run out of time once more. Uh, join us next time for How We Got Here. <laughs>